I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator John Cornyn calls to protect Title 42 Monday afternoon on the Senate floor. This Trump-era policy allowed Border Patrol to limit the number of asylum seekers due to COVID-19. The Texas senator believes Biden's move to end Title 42 would create, quote, more chaos. This comes as a delegation of House Republicans visited the southern border today as the number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border has surged in recent months. Here's more from Senator Cornyn on the Senate floor. Are we on a quorum call? Yes, we are. I'd ask consent that the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Madam President, uh, the Senate is now, of course, back in session following a two-week home work period, as we refer to it. That's when we get to go back home and see our friends and constituents and travel around our states. And uh, in my case, uh, representing 29 million Texans, uh, that entails a fair amount of travel. But it's always good to get reconnected with uh, your friends and your neighbors and your constituents. I know we're eager to hit the ground running here this week and certainly we have a lot to do. For example, the conference committee process for the China Competitiveness Bill will begin soon. And I'm eager to work with the fellow members of the conference committee to, to reach a strong bipartisan bill. The long list of unrelated partisan provisions in the House bill, though, ha have no place, in my opinion, in the final agreement. But I'm ready to get the ball rolling so we can pass a bill that serves the American people our economy, and most importantly, our national security. In the next couple of weeks, as we know, we could well see another pandemic relief bill come to the floor for a vote. I hope this package includes a piece of legislation that Senator Padilla, the senator from California, and I authored that would give state and local governments more flexibility to spend their excess COVID dollars, in this case on infrastructure or disaster relief. This bill passed the Senate unanimously and addresses a problem communities across our nation are facing. And there's no reason for it to be excluded from the larger package, so I'm optimistic. In the coming days, I hope the Senate will also take action to preserve the use of Title 42, the public health title uh, addressing COVID-19, following the president's reckless decision to eliminate it with no alternative plan in place, which would invite even more chaos at our southern border. Months ago, during the height of COVID, the Border Patrol told me that, Co that uh, Title 42 was helpful in repelling uh, migrants who were not claiming asylum uh, and avoiding having to process them on this side of the border. But that was one of the few things, given the huge number of asylum claims that were being made, that permitted them to control the flow of people across the border, at least in some manner. I'm proud to co-sponsor a bipartisan bill introduced by Senators Lankford and Senator Sinema, which would delay the end of Title 42 until there is a reasonable, workable alternative in place. There is bipartisan support for this legislation, and I hope it will receive a vote here on the Senate floor very soon. These are just a few of the items on the Senate's lengthy to-do list, but of course the single biggest item looming in the news and on our minds and hearts is the war in Ukraine. Over the last two months, Ukraine has endured unimaginable suffering, and its brave people and soldiers continue to fight to save their country. As Americans, we cannot lose sight of our role in the conflict. Our sons and daughters are not on the front lines, nor are we obligated by a treaty like the North Atlantic Treaty to come to the aid of Ukraine. But I believe we have a moral responsibility to aid a fellow democracy against this kind of unprovoked and outrageous aggression. We can't just send money and weapons halfway around the world and then pat ourselves on the back and say, job well done. As I said, we have a moral responsibility to help Ukraine not only fight, but also to win this war. We can't just 
prop up its forces to continue to take more hits without providing them a plan for them to sustain their efforts in the long run. Over the last couple of months, folks across the political spectrum have united in support of Ukraine. Matter of fact, this has been one of the truly bipartisan responses that we've seen here in Congress, bipartisan support of Ukraine. I have to say, amid so much pain and suffering, it's been encouraging to see people around the world, not just here in America, but around the world, stand shoulder to shoulder in support of Ukraine. As we know, since the war began, the United States has provided billions of dollars in military assistance, as well as humanitarian relief. This has come in the form of everything from body armor, to helmets, to ammunition, to Javelin anti-tank missiles. But as we know, more is needed. That was the message President Zelensky delivered to members of Congress. It was a message I heard from our partners in Europe when I traveled to Poland and Germany last month. And it's the same message we're hearing today. Send us the weapons we need to defend ourselves against this unprovoked and barbarous invasion by the Russian Federation. Daily, Ukrainian soldiers and civilians are being bludgeoned we need to get them the resources they need to hold the line, and we need to continue to act with dispatch. Just before the state work period, the Senate passed legislation that would help make that more likely. It was called the Bipartisan Ukraine Lend Lease Act, which I introduced with Senator Cardin that has broad bipartisan support in the Senate and that passed unanimously here earlier last month. This legislation is rooted in the same principle as the original Lend-Lease Act, which occurred during World War II, whereby the United States became what Franklin Delano Roosevelt called the arsenal of democracy. And we provided, at the time, up to $30 billion worth of materials, airplanes, ships, ammunition, all manner of weaponry, which allowed Great Britain to hang on against Nazi aggression. Now, if you translate the amount of assistance that the United States gave our allies in World War II under the Lend-Lease Act that was passed then and signed into law by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, it would translate into more than $400 billion today. And I think it's important for us to send a strong bipartisan message that the United States Congress supports Ukraine not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but for the long run. Now that the Senate has unanimously passed this bipartisan legislation, it's up to the House. As I said, this legislation is important, one, because it cuts the red tape and expedites the shipment and delivery of weapons. As it stands today, there are a lot of time-consuming steps between the U.S. deciding to send more resources and the force, to the forces on the ground. And between the time that the decision is made and the time that weapons are actually received. As we can see by the devastating videos of this war, there is no time for delay or red tape. Our assistance cannot move at the speed of the bureaucracy. And equally important is point number two. This bill ensures that we can send Ukraine's the Ukraine, the resources it actually needs, not just what current authorities allow. President Zelensky himself said, Ukraine can't shoot down Russian missiles with shotguns and machine guns. We need to listen to what Ukraine needs and send those items with dispatch. That's what this legislation provides for, nothing more and nothing less. It doesn't just help speed up the process, of getting this equipment to Ukraine, it will ensure that we are actually sending them the items they actually need and can actually use. Now, I know I don't have to convince my Senate colleagues that this is a good piece of legislation. We passed it unanimously two weeks ago. So we all understand this, what's at stake, and we're eager to remove the hurdles that prevent the United States from arming Ukrainian forces with what they need to win this war as soon as we can get it in their hands. I hope our Senate colleagues and the American people will contact our colleagues in the House and encourage them to pass 
the Ukraine Democracy Lend-Lease Act this week. Every day we're learning more about the horrors unfolding in Ukraine. We've seen Russian war crimes in Bucha and their well-founded fears that the same carnage is unfolding in Maripol. These developments should light a fire under our colleagues in the House to pass this legislation as soon as possible. Chris Alexander is a former Canadian diplomat who spent time posted at the Canadian Embassy in Russia. He recently said Lynn Lease is a potential game changer in the war in Ukraine. A potential game changer. That's, there's no better way to describe this legislation or to underscore its urgency. Last week, the Ukrainian Prime Minister himself said that our Lynn Lease program is what Ukraine needs to win the war. Over the last two months, Ukrainian forces have demonstrated unbelievable strength and bravery. So it's time once again for the United States to serve as that arsenal of democracy, as Franklin Roosevelt called it, and ensure that Ukraine has the full range of resources it needs, not just for today, not for just for tomorrow, but for the future as well. After this bill passed the Senate, Ukraine's Minister for Foreign Affairs expressed his gratitude to all 100 senators who voted to pass the bill. And he said he looks forward to its swift passage in the House. So I would respectfully encourage Speaker Pelosi to bring this legislation to the floor for a vote this week.